Hello everyone. This is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. Today we are going to discuss cost flow for process manufacturer. So in my uh, previous lectures, if you have noticed job order costing or if you have reviewed job order costing, we discussed the differences between a job order costing and process costing system. So today, before we start making general entries or generalize the transaction for, uh, in a process costing environment, we are going to discuss what are the similarities between job order and process costing system so you can see that it's not only differences, there are some similarities, especially when you post uh, some journal entries to, to the T accounts. So here, uh, the similarities include, they both have the same basic purposes. What it means, they have the same basic purpose. It means that when they both are used to assign um, material cost, labor cost, and overhead cost to products, right? Whether you're using a process costing system or a job order costing system, the end result is that you wanna find out a product cost. Now in a process costing system, you're going to assign cost to a particular department or process, and then you're going to um, assign allocate cost to a particular product. Whereas in a job order costing system, you're directly assigning cost to a product, but the purpose is the same. In the end, you're assigning cost to product. They also use the same manufacturing account. So raw material or material inventory account, work in process account, manufacturing overhead account, finished goods, cost of goods sold. So all the accounts are same. The only difference is that, that in a process costing system, you may have a multiple work in process account. You may have a multiple uh, manufacturing overhead account as well. Okay. Otherwise, the flow is the same from material inventory. If it's a direct material, it goes to work in process. If it's an indirect material, it goes to manufacturing overhead. Same is with the labor. If it's a direct labor, goes to work in process. Indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead. And once you complete the product um, and it transfers to finished goods inventory, again, uh, you debit finished goods inventory, credit uh, your work in process. So the flow is the same under process costing system as well. Um, so now we're going to start with some journal entries and some T accounts here. So the first one here is materials purchased for production. So as you remember, if you remember from our uh, job order costing slides, that when you purchase material, we either pay cash or you buy on credit. So if you paid cash, then you credit cash. If you purchase on account, then you credit accounts payable. So this is the general entry here is the same. You're crediting cash. Uh, or accounts payable. And now, the, because materials inventory is increasing, which is an asset, you are debiting your material inventory account, right? Also called a raw material account. So you're debiting that. So material purchases are debited in ma your material inventory account. Move on to the next one, direct material used in production. So very similar to what we have learned in job order costing system, when we use direct material, we debit work in process and we credit your materials inventory account. So here in general entry, you can see the same effect, work in process debit and materials inventory credit. The only difference here is that we are debiting work in process melting because as you can see, on the T accounts, there are two work in process accounts. There is work in process melting and work in process molding. So these are two different processes or two different departments that your material is gonna go through and labor and overhead you're going to apply. So in this case, because you are using material in your first department or process, which is melting. So you're debiting work in process melting and you're crediting your material inventory. Then direct labor, cost incurred in production. So when you incur direct labor cost, if you incur the direct labor cost in the melting department, then you're going to debit work in process melting and you're going to credit either wages payable or cash depending on how are you paying to your workers. So in this case, we used um, a wages payable account. So direct labor is credited and direct material, direct uh, and uh, uh, sorry, wages payable is credited. Uh, and then work in process melting is debited. 
move on to the manufacturing overhead, MOH applied to working process. Again, if you see in the slide here, I left the actual manufacturing overhead side just like that, and I, I put it here, actual manufacturing overhead incurred. So if you record, if you have to record the actual manufacturing overhead entries, please look at my job order costing system uh, video. We record the actual site the same way we record in the job order costing system. So if it's an indirect material, you debit manufacturing overhead account and you credit material inventory account. If it's an indirect labor, then you debit your manufacturing overhead account, you credit your wages payable. So all the flow is the same. So I skipped that step instead of I jumped into your applied overhead. So here, because we are applying manufacturing overhead to the melting department, so we are gonna debit work and process melting and we are gonna credit MOH applied, right? Or MOH account, okay? Now move on to our next slide, which discusses costs transferred out from work and process melting and costs transferred into work and process molding. TO is transferred out, TI is transferred in. So this is the same as transferring cost of goods manufactured. So instead of that, we are labeling transferred out cost and process costing and transferred in cost moving to another department. So because what you have manufactured or completed in melting department is moving to another department or process, which is molding. So we are debiting work in process molding department and we are crediting work in process melting department. Okay. Then we are going to use direct labor and we are going to apply manufacturing overhead to molding department. So same as we applied in the melting department, right? Or we used labor in the melting department. We are using labor here. So direct labor used here, wages payable credit and your work in process molding debit. And then again, when we apply overhead, your work in process molding debit and MOH applied credit. So you can do either two journal entries where you can do here. We, I have done one journal entry. Instead of that, you can do work in process molding and then wages payable credit. And then you do another entry, work in process molding debit and MOH applied credit. Or you can add wages payable and MOH applied account together. And then you put it that amount to work in process molding. So instead of doing two uh, journal entries, you can do one journal entries as you see here with a total amount. Now, in this case, I use just one manufacturing overhead account and, and, and I applied overhead to work in process molding. Um, the assumption here is that, that, that we have just one cost driver that is driving the manufacturing overhead account in both department. Let's say labor hours are driving, right? So if that's the case, we are using the same MOH account. However, when the industries get complicated and they have a multiple cost driver, especially in ABC costing system, and something else is driving cost, machine hours are driving cost in another department and labor hours are driving costs in another department. For example, melting is driven by machine and labor, uh, molding is driven by labor. Then we can use multiple manufacturing overhead account right? And uh, we can use a different rates to apply overhead in melting and molding department. So just like we created two work in process account, we can also create two manufacturing overhead account for these two different departments. Here, we are keeping it simple and we are applying MOH from uh, the same account. And then in the next one, cost transferred out from work in process molding and transferred into finished goods inventory. So here, uh, now the goods are completed. So transferred out here is basically the same as the cost of goods manufactured in your job order costing, right? Uh, the cost of goods manufactured going out from work, one work in process to finished goods inventory. So here we are um, saying that transferred out goods and transferred in goods to finished goods inventory. And here general entry is the same as what you have done in your job order costing, your finished goods inventory debited here and your work in process molding is credited. And the last one, 
here is the finished goods sold to customers. Again, the general entry here is same as the general entry you recorded in the job order costing. Once you sold the product, uh, it moves from your finished goods inventory to cost of goods sold, which is an expense account. Expense is increasing, you debit cost of goods sold. So you're debiting here cost of goods sold in the general entry and you're crediting finished goods inventory. So the flow is same. And if you see here, sometimes um, in, in the working process molding, you have a transferred in, in goods here. Uh, they are same as, you can consider as a material. You know, the whole material is transferred. You can consider as material, but you can also add more material as you progress because materials in a process costing system can be added any point in time. But in a job order costing system, it's also the case you can you don't have to add all the material at the beginning so for example in a job order costing system if you're building a house you don't add the paint at the beginning of the process right you probably are going to lay floor first so you have to add concrete first right you're not gonna uh, uh, install um, the tubs and uh, the sinks first because that part comes once you once your structure is completed so you're gonna add material at a different point in time. Similarly, in a process costing system, you can add material at a different point in time, wherever you need it. So if you are a publisher, but you're also manufacturing papers, then once it moves from the paper department, you finish making papers and moves to the publishing department, then at that particular point in time, you add ink so you can publish, you can, print papers so you add more material so when that material is added that's that's the second department so instead of in in our example here it was work in process melting and work in process molding you can consider work in process paper manufacturing and work in process uh, publishing then it becomes a completed product that can be sold at an intermediate stage and transferred directly from here to finished goods or it can be processed further and published you know, at that point, you can add more material to it. So that's possible that you can add more material at different point in times in a process costing system, also in the job order costing system. So that's our lecture for today. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, subscribe my channel for live updates and for more videos. Again, thank you.